Welcome to Networking Field Day 14. We are here at Juniper Networks. The presentation that you are about to watch is being attended by an invited group of delegates who are here to ask questions, make comments, and offer their opinions about the technology and solutions that Juniper will present. If you'd like to learn more about this event, go to our website at techfieldday.com. Check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. So just before starting the demo, I have a couple of slides to talk about uh, what I've been doing uh, regarding the models internally. So we, we have been model driven from, from day one, right? So uh, all of our internal teams, right, who, let's say for example, a routing team, they want to implement a new protocol. Uh, so the first thing they do is they write a definition, their, their command and their uh, configuration definition in the language called DDL, which eventually becomes young. Uh, and then it generates APIs automatically. So the developers doesn't really need to worry about how do I expose that same command to the NetConf interface or to the CLI interface or to other interface like gRPC or Thrift, right? And uh, CLI is just one of the one of the API which just uh, one of the client of the API which just renders the data. It's, it's very very dumb. It doesn't need to be so smart. It even even doesn't uh, really understand what Yang or DDL is all about. Uh, similarly, uh, like like DDL, we have a language called ODL, which is like output definition language. Uh, all Junos entities who are actually producing the states or, or like when you say show route or get route information, right? The actual daemon is emitting XML only. They, they don't need to worry about like do the print apps and uh, the after this is the identification or the, I have to give this many spaces to emit like a table and stuff like that, right? CLI is, is only good at the rendering. So it uses the language called ODL uh, and it renders the incoming XML and presents it to the user. If it is our netcon, then CLI will not come into the picture and it will directly relay back the XML to the, to the netcon client. Uh, and Yang and DDL are compatible. Let's, 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 let's just compare uh, both of the languages. So on the left hand side, it is data definition language that we have been using from day one. Uh, as you can see, like you can create a hierarchical data definition, what are the different types, uh, different uh, constraints on the data. At the right hand side, you have a corresponding Yang module for the same. Looks almost the same. Right. <coughs> that gives us an advantage of like exposing our custom Yang interface to the customers so that they can bring the bring their module dynamically or or even that applies to the open config or IT, any any ITF model as well because for us open config ITF is just like a custom model. Right. So BYOY, any guesses? Bring, bring your own Yang. Bingo. <laughs> so you can bring your own on Yang onto Junos. Uh, you can define your own configuration using that model. Uh, the one of the use cases, Guru said, is that uh, you can translate it into into Junos configurations, right? Uh, another use case would be uh, you can write a backend application on Junos, uh, which consumes this configuration for your need, right? Uh, similarly, you can define your states in which you can reverse translate the Juno state into your custom, uh, custom model state, or even can, your application can produce the states. Uh, by the way, we have, we have a topic about JET, which is Juno Sections and Toolkit, yeah, which talks more about the application part of it, right? Uh, so because just, just bringing in the model doesn't buy you anything. I mean, you really need something in the back end to process it, which is like your application, or at least the, the translation. And finally, you can define your own uh, custom RPC. You can say, my own command. Uh, and implement that uh, into your backend, right? The app again, like Juno's uh, producers, will produce only XML, and the CLI it will it will provide attachment point to the CLI if if it is really needed, uh, so for the rendering. So with that, uh, uh, I'll you, jump. May I ask a question? That um, I'm going to assume that I'm that there are people out, other people out there like me who aren't super in, up on Yang and all. That the language is. Um, okay, so, so Yang is an open standard, obviously. Um, ODL and DDL, these are internal. These are the proper, proprietary, are proprietary. Uh, languages. So if you if you if you look at DD, uh, DDL here, right, which which looks exactly identical, and there's a reason behind that, is because uh, we have contributed a lot when Yang was under development in the ITF, right? We have so basically you can think of Yang is nothing but a 15 years or 20 years of learnings in Juniper's DDL, minus all the problems that we face across, right? Okay. I mean, uh, we didn't come up with the language perfect from day one, so we understood, uh, we, we realized certain problems. Like, you can see choice here. 
uh, that becomes the enumeration there. So enumeration is really a uh, right thing for that, right? So we overloaded terms here and there, but we quickly realized it, and then when it, when it becomes standard, we suggested the, the doing it thing the, the right way. So the point is right. it's easy to translate between the two. Oh, yes. Um, do external people have access to DDL and ODL? Oh, or, okay. do we, they, or would we be programming in Yang and then Sure, so translate? for DDL part, they really don't need access because mm -hmm. uh, you can bring in your own uh, Yang module which internally compiles into the structures which we compile for DDL. Okay. So, so assume that DDL is for you, but through the Yang. Uh, there is no corresponding thing for ODL. But if you want to use it, we have created a Yang extension for that. I have a demo and I can show you how you can make use of that language. So it's now open uh, to, to anyone who wanted to use it. So as form of Yang extensions, because DDL uses some of the keywords which is not defined in Yang. Uh, sorry, ODL uses some of the keywords which is not defined in Yang because o uh, Yang doesn't really need to create the keywords for that. So that's why the beauty of Yang is that it provides uh, extensibility. So we have come up with our own extensions to give you a facility of writing your own ODL rules as well for your CLI rendering. Thank you. I just want to make sure I was understanding what the point you were making. So I'll be uh, using a simple uh, four outer topology, all virtuals, uh, two PEs and two CEs. And I'll just demonstrate the con configuring uh, L2 VPN uh, in PE and PEB. Uh, it's, it's a simple uh, demo model uh, just to return, just to show the uh, capability of Juno's, uh, how do you bring your own model and do the translation. Right, so I have a recorded demo here. Uh, so the intent of the demo is to uh, show how do you bring your own custom Yang, uh, how do you translate it back, and how do you define your own custom RPC to pull the states uh, from this model. So, uh, yeah, for that I have this uh, sample L2 VPN Yang. Uh, uh, and the corresponding translation script. <coughs> One translation script I have uh, used is uh, Python and another is in Slacks. Uh, we support uh, both of the languages in order for you to implement your uh, translation. Uh, we will we'll have uploaded on GitHub so you can uh, take a deep peek into it later. Uh, now with that, let's go to the, uh, the devices where I have two uh, CEs on the bottom and two PEs on the top. And I'll be loading uh, custom Yang and translation on the PEs. So just before that, let's run, uh, try to ping each other, like try to run uh, the pings from CEA to CB and vice versa, and let's see, they should not be going because there's no configuration available for L2VPN yet. Uh, on you said this was two PEs and a P in the middle, and then you have CEs on the outside? Was that the, was that the model? So uh, CEA is connected to PEA. Uh -huh. PEA and PEB are back-to-back -back connected. Okay. Gotcha. And CEB is connected to PEB. Okay, gotcha. So no P in the middle, just direct PE to yeah, PE. Yeah, just okay. direct P to P, yeah. Right, so, okay, so what happened here is, is I just launched CLI and go to config mode and try to configure L2 VPN, but it just says syntax error because the Juno schema really doesn't really know anything about uh, L2 VPN at this moment, right? So, so, so to make Juno's understood about your own schema, you can just run a command called request system yang add. You can specify your yang module and the translation script. Uh, and Junos will build the schema uh, and basically extend its schema with your incoming uh, Yang module. Let's let's do it. Let's do the same exercise on PEB as well. So while PEA is uh, loading the schema, so it, so this basically compiles into the same information what DDL used to compile. So from then on, everything is become native to us. It's like the first class, uh, you know, treatment will be granted to the to the incoming Yang. Uh, there's no feature that won't available on this because uh, it's all as if like it is DDL compiled stuff. So now let's go to config mode and see uh, whether the schema is understood. I mean, schema is understood or extended or not. And then the so CLI is now able to uh, display it. So this this brings a, uh, L2 VPN and some sub hierarchy inside that and some few sub hierarchies inside that, right? So that that's all now available uh, for you. Uh, through your CLI interface, as well as through NetConf interface or gRPC interface, right? Similarly, on PEB as well, you'll have the schema extended, and you can you can actually verify whether the schema really extended or not using show system yang uh, package command. So I have a sample configuration stored in this file, which is in set format. I'll just do uh, lot set on that. So this is the configuration that we have just loaded. 
And now you can run uh, stuff like uh, show pipe compare or, or show pipe display XML. Basically, any any available Junos feature is now granted to to your custom Yang as well, right? You want to emit the corresponding L2 VPNs config in XML, so just pipe it through XML and stuff like that. Again, it will work with Netcon by when you when you start using the get hyphen config RPCs and stuff like that. <coughs> All right, so now it's the time to commit the configuration. So here the the actual logic happens when you actually commit the configuration, the translation scripts will be fired and it will emit produce the corresponding Junos configuration which Junos producer will finally consume. Uh, on PEB, let's uh, let's configure the same thing using netconf. Uh, so I have a sample uh, netconf edit config RPC with that data payload for this custom Yang. So, and then finally it is firing the commit RPC as well as part of this. So this will do both load as well as commit. And once the P commit on PEB is done, you should be started seeing the pings on both of the CEs. So now important question, how do, how do I see what has been translated into Junos, right? So, so we have a command called show pipe display translation script, pipe display uh, translation config. So this is actually what emitted on the left hand side is the, is the one uh, which is being translated by the translation script in this particular example. So if you just do show routing instance, uh, you will not get anything because Junos really doesn't know anything about show routing instance. But if you do, if you pipe it through the translation command, then it will give you that yes. So we basically keep it separately. We don't interfere in each other's uh, area as far as the config goes. I'm just curious, are you looking at integrating this into OSS? Is that something you guys already like on the carrier side? So once, uh, once the schema is uh, en enhanced on the, on the device side, right, the OSS side can make use of the schema. Yeah. Based on their transport choice, either CLI or NetCon for GRPC, they can create a payload, payload of the data and the device would readily understand. Yeah, I just, uh, I mean, I'm, <clears throat> I see this having a common abstraction. You know, if you're running an OSS and you have an API in the OSS, I definitely see the abstraction from an OSS standpoint yeah. of being able to, you know, not rely on custom scripting and a lot of, you know, proprietary development to get to the, to achieve the same result. Yeah, sure. You, you, you will, you'll be able to do so. So you're saying that OSS would be trans, doing the translation on their own and produce the native, native configuration and push it to the device. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, sometimes to... a lot of times carrier OSSs tend to be like very closed and very, mm -hmm. you know, proprietary yeah. development to achieve some kind of a provisioning result. So, yeah. you know, if you had the ability to take an action of whatever your provisioning action would be and then use a construct like this that abstracts the configuration from the actual device that it needs to go down on, I see a lot of value in potentially tying those pieces together. Yeah. So, so now I just deactivated the configuration uh, and runs commit, so ping should stop. So again, like you can use all this deactivate, activate. There are Juno specific commands, but still uh, uh, those are available on the custom Yang as well. Uh, let's move on to the custom RPC part. So, so uh, sorry, in the background, are you, so are you, you know Juno's if memory serves is always kind of used XML for the configuration in the background, yeah. right? So are you just actually just translate, taking this and just translating it back to XML and, yes. and, and just then going back and forth? Yeah, so what happens is like uh, when you give set or load configuration, right? Internally, we put it in our binary database. Uh, and when you do a commit, a lot of commit checks happen on that, that database. And the daemon who are getting the SIG up would be using our own APIs to access the database. So that's all like internal consumption and it, sh it should be binary, uh, binary database so that it, it will be consuming fast. Uh, so none of the daemons directly consume XML. They, they, they consume the proprietary uh, binary information. But when you do show or when you again export it back to the users, right, it will get the binary information. We call it exporting. So the first thing is load, get XML loaded into binary stuff. And then exporting is the reverse of that. You get the uh, binary and uh, export it back to the uh, to the XML. And for custom YAG as well, it's 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 all like uh, uh, it's all the same same treatment. There's no there's no different treatment uh, for for custom YAG configuration instances. So so this is uh, uh, this is a sample uh, uh, RPC custom RPC definitions. So here I am defining my own RPC. 
get my L2 VPN information. And uh, we are using some of the extension that we have provided called Juno's call and command here uh, for you to specify that, okay, where I want to attach these on my CLI tree. Right, so you say, okay, my CLI for the corresponding RPC should be show my LTV in info, uh, and what script I re uh, the infrastructure should fire when it receives this command. So I can specify the script information here, and this is where I am defining my output, and those are the those are the kind of extensions that I was talking about uh, about the ODLs. So you can use this Juno's dash ODL colon template and stuff like that to render it back to the CLI. If you want. So this is the name of the RPC that is uh, being defined and the CLI and the corresponding uh, Python script. And the Python script which is pretty simple here, it uh, it just goes about and pull the L2 open state using existing Juno's RPC uh, and then uh, it goes about and find the peer information and go and talk to peer about PyEZ APIs, uh, get some information and display it for the users. Right, so th this is the corresponding action script that will be executed when you fire the RPC. So let's first go and uh, use the same command to uh, to teach Junos that how to understand this RPC, like using request system Yang add. So again, Junos will extend its command schema as well uh, to understand this RPC. So I need to specify the, uh, the the extension files as well because Yang really needs. I mean, whatever you import you need to specify in your input, right? So uh, otherwise Yang compilation would fail. So we are publishing those Juno's extensions as well. Now this is the command that uh, that will be linked onto the CLI. So say show, yeah, it's available here. So this is how you uh, run the command. It's right now not emitting any output. Uh, because previously I have deactivated L2 VPN uh, <coughs> configuration. So let's activate it again and commit. <coughs> then you run this uh, my L2 VPN info command. So this goes about and talks both of the peers and this is how it does rendering. I mean the, the CLI user will get this output but if you actually see what has your script has emitted, right? It it is always emit XML. So this is the data that is coming from your script. The the table your format will, is done by ODL extensions. Right? You can even get the corresponding output in JSON. Script really doesn't need to do anything uh, on different formats. Uh, similarly, you can fire the same RPC over NetCon channel. So I have this get my L2 VPN info RPC, uh, which will be fired on the NetCon. So this is how we bring your custom RPC and stuff like that. So the script has all, only, on, uh, only produced XML. Uh, let's, let's take a look at the script again. Uh, Okay, this is the, the Yang module which uh, displays the uh, audio extension for rendering. It's a bit, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's a new, so maybe you might find what is this picture and all about, but it's pretty straightforward uh, rendering rules that you can implement using Yang. And this is the actual script which goes about and emits the XML. It really doesn't need to worry about the table and uh, indentation and stuff like that. Yeah, so this is this is how Juno you know, supports custom Yang. Extend similar concept to open config or IETF, whether it's Juniper supported or, uh, or 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 a customer return or a third party return, the same infrastructure, exactly the same architecture that will be that will be triggered uh, underneath. So just, just a quick question, the software stack that supports all this, and you, I may have missed it in a previous slide, is it wrapped up in a VM, is it a container, is it a box, what is it? What does that look like? So this this is like a device software, so you you, you uh, 
uh, load your VMX Junos or SRX Junos or mm -hmm. uh, EX or MX Junos. All this infrastructure will be shipped with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can develop your own custom Yang outside of it and then bring using these commands into the Junos. Okay. So it, it's all part of, the infrastructures are all, is all part of Junos. It's baked in the Junos operating it's system. It's based in the Junos operating okay. system. Is, is there any kind of a, uh, you know, external controller or something that's, you know, actioning on all of this that, that you deploy? Yes. No, so you, you, we, we uh, so there's two parts to it. One is the Juno software, which has all of these models. Right. You can also add these uh, Yang packages, open config your own, whatever, as external drop-in. So that would be a second piece to it. And then to manage everything up top, right, we are providing our own controller. We, are, we have a prototype right now. Okay. Uh, it, it, uh, it's also something that absorbs telemetry feeds and, and also has the ability to program. But that's prototype right now. Okay. The other alternatives would be to use what's out there. So if um, you know whichever service provider is using their own OSS, uh -huh. they would actually use OpenConfig or whatever models to talk back down to uh, our gear. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Yeah.